So the order sheet form is wired up to use the control group, but I have yet to wire up the individual form fields. I'll go ahead and get on that now. Angular has a directive named ng-control-name that you can use to wire these up. This directive has a selector named ng-control in camel case. It will take in whatever string value you give it and look for a control in the parent control group with that same name. To start with, I'll cover how to work with inputs of type text. Over in the order sheet component HTML file, there are a couple of these text input types. Starting with the customer name, I can add the attribute ng-control without the square brackets and set that equal to the name I gave to the order sheet form control group object of customer name. By doing this, Angular now knows that this element should be tied to the control I created in code, and all the two-way binding magic will be in place. And since I built the form model representation out in code, Angular can let me know if I try and wire up an ng control to a name I haven't set up yet. So if I change this name to be customer name to use, and I look at this in the browser and check the console, I can see Angular throws an error, and the error tells me that a control with that name could not be found. So let me change that back to customer name in the code. And notice that you don't have to set up any other form element attributes here, things like name or value or ID. Angular is keeping track of all the details for you, so your implementation is pretty clean and straightforward. And back in the browser, checking out the form model output, you can see that the property customer name has the value of null. And if I start typing in the box, you can see the value changing in the output. Notice too, if I clear out this box, the value stays a string. So the only time it was null was when I had the default value set to that. The other input type text this form has is the weird requests. Now remember, I set those up as a control array. For these, I'm going to make use of the Angular directive ng-control-group. Just like ng-control, you put this on an element as an attribute and set it equal to the name you used as the property in the parent control group object. So back in the code, you want to put these on an element up above where the controls are going to be, but below the parent it lives in. So I can add ng-control-group in camel case onto this ul element that is around the weird requests and set it equal to weird requests. Then on the li element, I'm going to want to loop these out for however many weird request controls I have. So I can use asterisk ng4 and set that equal to let item of weird request controls dot controls. Remember, weird request controls is the name of the property I set up on the order sheet component class for holding a reference to that control array. And I get the list of controls in that control array via the property named controls. I'll also create a template input variable named i and set that equal to index. So I can add a semicolon to the ng4 statement and put let i equal index. And then on the input element, I can set ng control equal to i in double curly braces. Since the value in here is not going to be treated as a statement, so I need to have it rendered in here as a string, thus the use of the interpolation statement. I'll also wire up the click event on this remove request button to call that on remove weird request method that I had created on the component class. And I'll pass it in i because it works with an index. And finally, I can wire up the add a request button click event to call the on add weird request method I created. Now over in the browser, I can add some weird requests. and see in the debug panel the values getting changed. And the same goes for if I remove requests. So with that, the inputs of the type text are wired up as well as the use of the control array.